have to talk about each each course. Just like what you made, and then Zeke and Tim are gonna talk about the mead they made and how they why they think it pairs well. And yeah, just for like a minute. I was in Anna. You in a Santa? Yeah. All right. All right, I'm gonna come back, we'll make a plan. You get to you get to study right before you go out. So it'll be like 30 seconds. Um, this is our first course, it's blah, 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 and this is why, you know, like just something about it. I'll do it. Like a beautiful word, and then boom, and then, all right, well, I'll let you get your head wrapped around it, and um, I'm still gonna embarrass you at least by saying something across the room. So Tim and Zeke are sitting at the end of the bar, and I thought it'd be cool, like, when you guys start to maybe start there, and then the next time kind of be there, and then just kind of work the room, you know, as things are coming out. But, I mean, everyone's, you know, you guys know, is sat in here, so. Sound cool? Yeah. All right, on. Jen, will, Jen and I will do uh, like a welcome, and then as the first course comes out, if you guys want to team up with Anna and just take it from there. Are we starting at the oysters or? Yeah. We're starting at the oysters. Okay. So we're right. presenting on that as well. What's that? We're presenting on the oysters yeah. or we're starting from course one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just okay. you guys talk about the meats for all six, and I'll just do a welcome and a close. Yeah. I got to think of something smart to say. I haven't prepared any remarks, but freestyle. Test, test. Hey guys, welcome to the first meat and food pairing event of its kind that we've put on or anyone in the world has put on. We have <laughs> Chrissy's Airport, if you guys don't know, she has an awesome meadery, Mazer Cup, multi-time medal winner and wrote the best book on mead ever. Uh, the Art of Mead Food Pairing, which I helped edit a little bit. So if you find any grammatical errors or spelling errors, it's my fault. But she flew in from Oregon today just to join us for this event, which is pretty cool. And we've got John Rowley from Rowley Farmhouse Ales and some other distinguished guests. And, and this is not just a Mead and Food Pairing here. This is our nine-year anniversary. So thank everyone so much for being a part of our story. There are so many people that have supported us from day one, from the first time we won a medal at, at the Mazer Cup, to Prescott, to opening up this place. This building wouldn't be here, this event wouldn't happen, these jobs wouldn't be here if it wasn't for many of the people in this room. So guys, we're here because of you. We survived the last crazy year and a half because of you guys. So this is our first event we've been able to have to, to rub elbows and talk and share everything that we love about mead and food. So thank you so much for being here tonight with us. This is awesome. And I just wanted to let you guys know too, like, thank you to the staff. They have stuck with us. Most of the people started with us when we first opened and have not given up and they see the vision and they know what's going on and it's really cool. Just the kitchen staff, I mean, look at, look at this. Food is going to be like nothing you've had before. It's going to be outstanding, and it's all thanks to these guys and the service of our staff. So without them, we wouldn't be here either. So I just want to acknowledge all everybody. Guys, have fun, eat, drink, talk about the pairings and what you think we came up with. And as the courses come out, Tim and Zeke, production manager, head mead maker, and Anna, our pastry chef, are gonna talk about what's coming out each time. So have fun and let me know what you guys like the best out of the White Series this year. We're gonna start off with this welcome bite of a kumiai crudo oyster with sesame breadcrumbs and a spicy micro pico. We excited? Yeah! I know I am, it's been a wonderful day. Um, so I'm gonna explain a little bit about the first drink to you. It's called Moons of Alabaster. This is a piquette piment. So uh, what we did was rehydrate the pumice off of our wine press and use that to create essentially a, like a low alcohol wine tea. And being a meadery, we decided to add a little bit of honey to it. That's what we do, so that's what we did. Uh, I brought it back up a little bit. And the way we thought about this pairing with the first course with this oyster is it's really kind of a palate cleanser. So it's something nice to sip on and enjoy while you're hanging out, waiting for the food to start coming. And you take a sip, you have your oyster, and it kind of gets you right back to where you're going and gets you ready for the second course. I um, really hope you guys enjoy it. This is something new. It's something no one's ever done before. And it was something that we were really excited about. We don't do a ton of dry product. Uh, and myself, so I'm the production manager. My name is Zeke. And our head meat maker, Tim, 
are both former brewers. If you guys don't know much about brewers, we like lager. We like things that are simple, clean, drinkable. Uh, we love mead, that's why we work here. But sometimes you gotta switch it up and this is where the piquette came in. So this is something really nice to start off the evening with and really get you going for the night. It smells good, right? <laughs> we should save that. <laughs> so we bought some apple juice and some honey and made uh, the first sizer and that was the Astral Reef. And that was kind of the idea with the six of these was just repurposing what we had and what we have on hand to add some structure and some body to things that wouldn't have it existing in that particular way otherwise. So you know, usually the way we get our body is through the residual sweetness. But with these, we can you know, find a way to add some tannin to it, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, so basically after we made our wines, what happened was we kept that great pumice. The pumice is the pressed skins and seeds and stems. And then basically out of that tank, we just put water back in it, added honey, rehydrated, added yeast, and re-fermented. And because there's still mo so much sugar bound into those grape skins, that it's got a bunch of that, that longevity and, and that flavor still there. Then we're gonna move on to this chilled soup. It's called a salmorejo soup. It's served with sweet chili liquid orbs and an herb and cheese crostini wedge. So flamingo croquet is a, is a kind of a spicy sizer. A sizer is an amalgamation of, of mead and cider. Um, I had never encountered such a beverage when I made this. So it's got kind of a labor of love for me. It was one of the first things that I really dug into. Uh, it was kind of a, a wild day. We were real busy and I had a great time making this. We got this wonderful apple juice from a guy that we know named Dwight. And then we, we took our Arizona wildflower honey, mixed it to our concentration. And then the fermentation smelled so beautiful to get those two things together, apples and honey. And, and then I'm not a fan of spicy alcoholic beverages. And these guys just kept saying, no, 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 we need more hatch chilies. We need more hatch chilies. I'm, are you guys? That was this one. <laughs> I wasn't on board either. It's delicious. And they kept saying, throw more, throw more. And I said, I don't know. I think we're there. I think we're there. And then when we finally got there, I realized, oh no, now we're there. This is a perfect beverage. This is one of my favorite things we've ever made. And it was one of the first things that I got to make as the head mead maker at Superstition. So I'm really proud of this beverage, and I think it's gonna go really cool with this soup. Just a marriage of spice and sweetness and a lot of wonderful ingredients, bringing everybody together all at the same table. This is my course. I, I have been looking at the menu and wanting this myself a lot. <laughs> so enjoy, everybody. So there's chili oil in the spears. Yeah. Oh, this is like the best soup ever, man. I love this. Yeah, I need more. <laughs> and someone defeated to me. Isn't this, a, this is my, I think my favorite pairing besides the dessert. I, I didn't even believe that this would be a good thing. I'd never had it before we made it. And it is from the series we do with the organic apple juice that we get from down in Tucson, um, from the English Family Farms, I, I forget the exact name of the company. The guy's name is Dwight. Um, great dude, great apple juice. But this is my favorite of the sizes that we make with his product. Um, it just has a really nice balance. The spice brings structure and balance to something where it would be kind of body driven through the sweetness, but the spice cuts through that. So it, it's almost like having its own food pairing in the drink itself, it's really cool. It's yeah. No, it's not. It's like it's almost sample. savory. Yeah, in its flavor, like it's nice. Big, big fan. Huge. Huge fan. <laughs> Huge. Our second course is blackened and seared dry aged beef carpaccio with pear micro salad, a fig pear dressing, shaved grana padano, and a creamy horseradish sauce. What you guys have getting dropped for your beverages right now is the Apple Brandy Barrel Age San Simone. And this was a very, very special product to us. Um, this is a combination of cherry, of apple, of honey, 
We use the same organic apple juice that we got for the Flamingo Croquet. Comes from down around Tucson. But the cherry was something that was a truly unique ingredient that not many people in the world and in our industry are privileged to get to work with. It comes from a winery in Denmark called Frederiksdal. Uh, and it truly, these are very rare cherries. Uh, and this is one of the finest producers of cherry wine in the world. Best. And they are, yes, John is right. They are Best. the finest. Not one of, they are the finest. Uh, it, is, it is truly a wonderful product. If you see it, I highly recommend you try it. Uh, it's something I've only come across once or twice, and it's truly wonderful. Uh, so we're very, very lucky to have connections and have friends that are able to link us up with these people uh, to be able to do something like this. So what we did was blend the cherry juice, the honey, the apple juice all together to create this product. And we took it and we aged it a few different ways. So we have a non-barrel aged version, we have a cherry brandy barrel aged version, and this is the apple brandy barrel aged version. And the cherry's gonna bring a little bit of spice to it. It's gonna work really nicely with the beef. It's gonna kind of accentuate the meaty notes to it. And it's got enough sweetness and the fruity characteristics to accentuate the pear and the other things going on with the salad going on there. Uh, this is a really wonderful pairing. I truly adore this mead. I uh, really hope you guys enjoy it. I kind of want to eat this forever. Forever? You don't want it to end here? I never want this to end. I'll still take a platter of those oysters, though. <laughs> any day, any yeah, day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, y'all want to come up and make us lunch? Yeah, I mean, for me, like, it's very earthy and peppery, but I think that's what the barrel brings to this. Like, you're not getting like the sweet coconut oaky notes. It's more uh, like spice. Yeah, there is kind of a kind of a blend and run through of flavors that is really. You know, what's an adjective that describes a river flowing? It flows really well. Rivers, yeah. <laughs> no, this this is just like strengths on strengths. It's nice. This is such a good pairing because you've got this raw beef carpaccio with this beautiful crust, and the cherry like accentuates the beef so well. But then the salad it has pear slices, which is different than apple, but totally complementary. And you're like, I'm tasting the apple in there separate from the cherry when I'm going back and forth between the steak and the salad and then the cheese is a whole nother thing that's just kind of weird but kind of really delicious and there's that savory umami character that you get from like cherry skin that for whatever reason seems to go with this um, the, the thin slice of parm so well yeah this next thing is so we, we went like light and then the soup was spicy and then we went light and airy and then we're gonna get into like a really, really heavy dish next. And, a, and like the most satisfying, like warm your soul of ways. And I, I'm normally not like a baked brie or brie person at all. And this thing is ridiculously delicious. Moving on to our third course, we're gonna change it up with brie cheese wrapped in a puff pastry dough. It's baked and covered with a shishito pepper jam drizzle and local organic edible micro flowers. For this course, we have a mead that's very near and dear to our hearts. It's called Honey Stacks. Um, I don't know how many of you love Arizona craft beer. Uh, wonderful. So this is a mead that we made with our friends at Dark Sky. Uh, so it's blueberry, maple, and cacao nib. What I really love about this pairing is the, the richness that the maple and the blueberry bring to it really kind of bring out everything that baked brie is. And then the earthiness of the cacao kind of adds that contrast to it. So you get a little bit of both with this pairing. It's a really fun mead. This is a really great dish. We hope you all enjoy it. It's almost like dessert in the middle of dinner. <laughs> Rich, buttery cheese. A little bit of smokiness in the, in the dough. 
It's like a breakfast. It's really nice with this pairing. You know, baked brie, it's very, very rich. And the blueberry and the maple kind of bring that. You have the richness from the maple. The fruitiness from the blueberry kind of accentuates a little bit of what's going on with the brie. Has a little bit of contrast, but a little bit of compliment. And then the earthiness from the cacao really adds a little bit of bitterness and a lot of contrast to what's going on with the richness of the dish. So it's a lot of fun and we really enjoy this one. The maple and the jam, like that's what makes it work. I thought it'd be the cacao, but it's the maple. The undertones of the berry and the cheese, the funk from that brie, that nice brie funk coming out together. And there's just a little freshness on top with the greens and the flowers. Our fourth course is Higanti ravioli, stuffed with roasted baby beets, mascarpone cheese, Thai basil, mustard and thyme herb cream sauce, toasted pine nuts, and confetti cheese. All right, so to drink with this course, we have Moretta, which is a melomel, which is a fruit mead with blackberry, cherry, and red currants. And looking at this, you know, we have the beets, they're very earthy. We have herbs that bring some earth to it. Uh, the mustard as well, but also a sweet cheese. So we have some earth, some fruits that tend to present a little bit earthier in the dark berries as well as the currants. But the acid also helps to cut through the sweeter cheese and that creaminess. So you get a little bit of savory, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of tart, a little bit of rich. Um, it's going to be a really fun course. This is the one that when I looked at the menu, I was most excited for. I feel like I've said that once or twice already. It's always true every single time. I uh, really hope you guys enjoy this one. I just tried this for the first time today. Both Tim and I are a little newer with Superstition, uh, so we didn't get to make this mead, but we both really enjoyed it, and we hope you guys do too. It's going pretty smooth. We've never done a big party like this before, so it's, uh, this is where you learn all your weaknesses and strengths. We, we know what we're doing, but it's also, we're a little rusty. It's been a minute, you know, since we've had to, do big event planning. Thanks. And now that we have this place, it's like, well, do we do it here? Do we do it in Prescott? Is it a combo? Um, we're wondering if we can get uh, an extension of premises, like a liquor license that lets us use the parking lot. We could, like set up a tent and have like, you know, maybe 200 people out there. I mean, like, I, I literally did a food and beer pairing dinner for my parents for Christmas one year. And they don't drink craft beer. I was thinking like, what can I do? And so we did this five, uh, six course meal Reception was a cheese, cheese board and Saison DuPont, and then five courses. They don't drink anything like anything that we gave them, either of them. They both drank all of it. And it's a really great way to like get people familiar with something and introduce them to something that they wouldn't eat otherwise. This is something my mom would go absolutely nuts for. They ate everything, they drank everything, and it was like all stuff they'd never do. It's such a great forum for relating your product to people. Here's what I do, here's what these people do well, here's what I do well. Let's bring those together and show you what good flavor is. Such, I mean, just with time, I mean, how many people are gonna get introduced to what we do and the potential to make this stuff at home or like to, just to explore new flavors. Open your mind right. to this whole new class of beverage. Right. And, and even the cider and the wine stuff. Like, right. Nobody knows about it. I mean, it's, it's just opening everybody up and it's opened me up to so much new flavor and new things and my mind is constantly expanding just with what we've done so far. So yeah. I'm... And like tonight's a cool example of like I said to Adolfo, make some stuff you never that. And you guys, make some stuff. Like, just go. Just keep doing it. We're doing it every year. Finally, for the main course, we're gonna have ostrich meat medallions with steamed rainbow cauliflower, freshly cut baby heirloom tomatoes, spice sweet potato puree from Okinawa, and a Marion mead reduction. For this one, we have a mead called Breaking Ground, uh, which was actually a mead made for this place. Um, the building is on the label, and uh, this is an elderberry vanilla mead. So thinking about something, uh, it's a very, very rich mead, very big body, 
The vanilla kind of accentuates that. And the earthy tones and the richness really work with the richer meat and an earthier meat like ostrich. And the vanilla is gonna kind of help to smooth it out, especially with the spice of the curry and the vegetables and all of that. So it should be a really nice kind of lot of contrast, but a lot of compliment going on in the pairing. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'm gonna keep bugging you for just a minute because I'd like to introduce my sidekick, Tim here, hey who guys, corrals hey. our gang of hooligans that make all the mead. If you guys could all give him a hand. Yeah. He's a wonderful person. But we have two very, very special people in the house tonight, without which none of this would ever, ever happen. Not a single person that works for this company could do their job without these two wonderful human beings. We have Sam and Kim, who make it all happen. I mean, and think about it. you lived in Arizona for years. I mean, how many places are like this? There's a couple popping up, not literally, like, but like in cool buildings, but you got to look for it, you know? And no one's doing this, and no one's doing this menu. Nope. Cool. Have you guys eaten here before tonight? Many times. Oh, nice. Yeah. It was nice. What are some of your things you like on the menu? On the menu? Well, I like the dessert stuff. I like the creme brulee for sure. Oh, yeah, that's insane. Yeah. yeah, and it's unbelievable. Yeah, so we are definitely looking forward to this dessert. That's oh yeah, that, that was the crazy, I said, it, well, even to Adolfo for the other courses too. Make something you've never made, you've always wanted to, came up with this, it was spot on, and then the dessert, I was like, go yeah. crazy. You're, you're doing something great here, man. Just, thanks, I'm yeah. Glad to see that, just own it, keep it, you're, you're amazing, so. Cool, thanks, man. Right, thanks. All right, we'll see you guys, have fun. Yeah, the conversation, it's so cool. And even, you know, like, some of the critique or whatever, but most, most everyone's like, yeah, that is spot on. And if, they, if there's something that they picked out that they're like, well, I like this better than that, and this is why, it's like, all right, cool, I can see that, you know, but we wanted to illustrate how there's complementary and contrasting pairings, and then there's pairings where you can pick it apart, like the carpaccio, it was like cherry with the meat and apple with the dressing and the salad, and you could just isolate aspects of the drink while through the food, and then there's times where it just, everything's better. And then the brie, the last one was just like smooth, silky goodness, but it wasn't necessarily Picking anything out, which you I can go see. with almost anything. That yeah. One would, it's but, just and so then the big. spicy soup, like clearly, like the spice and the hatch in the drink was that it. Soup course is cool as shit. That's my you favorite one so far. Oh, dude, it's killer. Yeah. The piece de resistance of this whole pairing is six different meads, all from this year's white series, served on a light board made from a retired mead barrel stave and we're going to have this seven part dessert with vanilla and chocolate white mousse, gooey salted caramel blondies, a dark chocolate truffle filled with cacao nibs, lemon curd, a shortbread cookie, an almond cake with sweet mulberry jam, house-made toasted marshmallow filled with white chocolate ganache and a crispy mini Kentucky Derby hand pie. You're going to have this dessert arranged like the constellation of Taurus the Bull on a board as you sip each one ounce sample of the White Series, you'll be able to take a, a bite that's designed to pair with that exact mead and then cleanse your palate with the center dessert. And I think this is gonna be the greatest mead and food pairing meal that's ever been designed. And some of you guys already know the story, but some people don't know the story of how Berry White Day and Berry White came about. Jeff and I, you know, we started really small and we made this mead that we aged on vanilla for way too long. 